Okay, friends. Hello. Today we are going to read the supporting story that goes along with our story, Animals Building Homes. If you would like to follow along in your hard reading book, it is starts on pages 210 and 211. So if you want to, you can pause the video and get your hard reading book and open up to pages 210, 211. Otherwise, you can follow along with me as I read through the story in this video and we talk about um, the type of story that it is and we compare it and contrast it to our story called Animals Building Homes. So, first of all, let's talk about what kind of story this is. This is also an informational text, just like our animal, Animals Building Homes story. So this story is also full of information. We're going to have a lot of facts about the topic. Remember, the author is going to show us real photographs of things because the author wants us to see the real things that she's talking about or he's talking about in this story. Now, we have talked about headings in our informational stories, but today we're going to talk a little bit about some subheadings. Remember, headings are like words at the top of the page to tell you what the page is going to be about. Subheadings are kind of the same thing, only they give you even more information about either the pages or the book itself, or maybe even some of the pictures. Now we'll also see words in bold print, and we've seen these already before. Bold print words are those words that are darker and they stand out more on the page. Sometimes they're a little bit bigger, and the author uses that kind of print to make you notice that that word is very important or those sentences or phrases are very important and that you need to pay attention to what they're saying. Okay, so let's read through this story and then we will compare it and contrast it to our animals building homes. Whose Home Is This? by Jolie K. Stevens. Why do animals need homes? Animals need homes just like we do to stay safe and warm. Look at the pictures of animal homes on the next few pages. Can you guess what kind of animal might live in each home? So let's look on this next page right here, 211. Now here is a subheading. It says, this home is up high. So this is a picture of a home. And here is a caption that goes along with the picture. It's words that tell you about the picture. It says, this nest looks like a pile of dead leaves and branches. It is an animal's home. Many animals make their nests in trees. These nests are made from things the animals can find close by. Things such as leaves, twigs, moss, or feathers are used in nests. And down here in bright green letters, who lives here? See if you can think in your head before I turn the page, who lives here? Hmm. Hopefully you have your guess, and hopefully you guessed that it was a squirrel. Here's our subheading, some squirrels live in trees. You know how Mrs. Tucker likes squirrels. Mm -mm. Nope, nope, nope. And here's a caption that goes along with this picture. Squirrels have large, strong claws that help them climb and jump. It says in the box, birds are not the only animals that live in tree nests. A large cluster or bunch of leaves and twigs high in a tree might be a squirrel's nest. Baby squirrels can stay in the nest for up to 10 weeks. A squirrel might use a nest for another few months or even a few years. Sometimes squirrels will build more than one nest and use them all. It's interesting to know. Squirrel can have a lot of different homes. All right, here we go on the next page. It says, this home is busy. Here's an example of another home. And it says, these insects are building their home. And I bet if you had the book in front of you, you could look at that picture real, real closely to figure out what those insects are. Let me read real quick and see if we can figure it out. There are thousands of small insects that live and work together in this tree. This insect is often called busy because it's always working. Who lives here? Maybe you're looking at it in the book. Maybe you're looking at it on the screen. Let's see if you can guess what it is. Did you guess? A bee. Yes, it's a bee. It says, here's our subheading, bees work together in a hive. And here's a little caption about this picture. A beehive is a very busy place. A beehive is made up of parts called combs. Bees make the combs out of wax from their own bodies. The cells or small spaces near the edge of the comb hold honey. The cells in the middle are where the queen bee lays the eggs. Some bees look after the hive. Other bees collect nectar from flowers to make their food or honey. Interesting. All right, 
Then on the next page, our subheading says, this home can move from place to place. I'm thinking this must be the home right here. And it says right here, an empty shell like this one was once home for an animal. There are many kinds of animals that live in or near the ocean. Can you guess what kind of animal might live in a shell? Who lives here? Think about it real quick before I turn the page. Can you guess who lives in this shell home? Did you guess a hermit crab? Here's our subheading. Hermit crabs carry their homes with them. The hermit crabs along the shore can be very shy around people. They like to hide inside their crab, in their inside their shells. A hermit crab does not have a hard shell. It uses another animal's shell for cover. When an animal gives up its shell, a hermit crab may use it for its own. When a crab grows too large for its shell, it will molt or cast off the old shell. Then it will get a new one. Would you like to live in a shell? I don't think I would like to live in a shell. No, I think I'd like to live in my house. Okay, so let's talk about how are these two stories alike and how are they different. So let me go back to the beginning of our story here. Let's talk about how they are the same. How are they alike? Well, we have two informational texts. So both stories are the same because they are both informational texts. They give us information about a topic and facts. Also, too, we only have an author for both. We don't have an illustrator because, here's another way they're the same, they both use photographs so that we can see the real thing in the story. Remember how the author likes to do that. Plus, in our story, Animals Building Homes, we did see some words in bold print, and I pointed them out as we were reading through the story, when we read through the story the second time. We had some words in bold print to kind of stand out, to make us pay attention to those words. Plus, both stories are talking about animals and homes, right? Now, what's one way that they're different? Well, this story has subheadings and these captions which go along with the, the pictures. We don't have the captions that go along with the pictures in our story, Animals Building Homes. Plus, this story is talking about different kinds of animals and different kinds of homes than the Animals Building Homes story. Plus, this story is written a little bit different because you kind of have to guess which animal we're talking about before you turn the page. It's kind of like a mystery story, which I kind of like. It's kind of neat. Okay, so those are just some ways that our two stories are the same and are different. So thanks for watching, friends, and thank you for listening, and I will see you again soon. Bye.